Cool. So I think this is like the first time in six years since we opened Epic where both of us actually don't own a Jeep personally and drive a Jeep personally. So um, yeah, I'm driving a Ram truck. What are you driving again? I'm borrowing <laughs> my wife's very economical Nissan Versa Note. You are. In stick shift. In stick shift. Yeah. And it's uh, it's called Blueberry because it's It's, it's called the Blueberry because it's blue. It's pretty cool. And the old, old other thing too is uh, I have a Mazda Miata, the 2011 Mazda Miata. Mainly I bought it because uh, putting Christian in it is pretty funny. So when he gets in and out of it and drives around in it, um, people laugh. It's, it's, it's for good humor. Um, yeah, so this is episode number two. Apparently we had lightning in the bottle with the first one and we're doing this again. Um, I'm doing this against my will, are you? I had nothing better to do. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, this episode is called uh, Mud, Sweat and Lust. I know it sounds very erotic, but it's Mud, Sweat and Lust, a seductive discussion on Jeeps in 2024. I'm gonna figure out who actually writes this stuff. Um, chat GTP. Um, so talking about the state of the industry in 24 is kind of what we wanna get to. But before we do that, um, as I was kind of spouting some things, like obviously doing our podcast for the first time last week and yeah. getting it out there and it's kind of daunting and you're like, are people gonna like this? Is uh, I was shocked how many people are actually listening and watching. Um, the phone calls, I was surprised. The phone calls are huge, yeah. I was kind of surprised people calling from all over North America and giving us a call saying the they The Mojave it. questions have died down a bit they have. or yeah. they called and they watched the video first yeah. before the phone call, which is, that's amazing guys. It saves yeah. me a lot of breath. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of days I go home pretty raspy, well, sounding like a smoker, even though I don't smoke. The reason we're doing this is because it's self-serving, man. It's just to save us time during the day. Yeah, realistically. Yeah. like There's only just, so many hours in the day. I can only talk about so many things in a day. Paul really does this so he can listen to me on his drive-in. Pretty much. He yeah. just puts it on the radio and it's yeah. like, oh, there's yeah. voice again. It's yeah. so soothing. Too funny. Uh, yeah, so looking back, uh, when we put the actual podcast, the audio section of it, I was, yep. uh, I was kind of surprised that in Canada, so you get the, the podcast statistics that are published everywhere around the world um, and just using the Spotify network uh, to push it out. Um, Podcast.spotify pushes it out. But I was kind of interested that we were number nine in the automotive cat category in Canada. And I'm like, who are these other eight people ahead of us? I, I don't know. It's weird. But I was, Canada's hey. what, 40 million people now? I don't know. Do we get a trophy for that? I think we might get a trophy. We were 30, 34th last week in the automotive category in the USA yeah. and 41st in Australia. <laughs> I don't know, man. I have no idea why people are... That's a lot of podcasting that's, about vehicles in Australia. That's a lot of podcasting. Yeah, we had everybody from France, the Netherlands, Mexico. Uh, we had Spain. Yeah, we had a bunch of different people listen to us. So it's been, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, so today we just wanted to talk about, because, um, you know, why we don't have Jeeps is we're kind of trying to decide ourselves, what are we actually getting? What's going to be the next thing um, that we want to do? Because we both have owned so many Jeeps over the last yeah. six, seven years and before that. Well, um, maybe we'll get into what we're getting later in the podcast. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about that later. And uh, before we begin uh, that whole thing is, uh, this is Two Dudes, One Wrench, and today we have... Today, can... I've brought a snap-on 21 millimeter flank drive wrench. Cool. This is one of the most common wrenches used to do suspension on Jeeps today. Nice. And uh, another three payments, and I will finally own this. Oh. It's taken a long time, That's almost but paid off. If you, uh, if you ever oh. buy snap-on tools, uh, if you know, you know. You know. No. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, so where I'd kind of maybe start the discussion is we, obviously, with the 24s coming out, there's so many changes with the 24s and the Wranglers. And then with the Gladiator, the 24 Gladiators coming out, there's a lot of those same changes coming. And so wanted to kind of touch on, because obviously there's lots of reviewers out there reviewing Jeeps and showing all the new 24s. But for us working on them, we've been working on 24s since last summer, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, so we've done Willys, we've done 4xEs, we've done Rubicons, we've pretty much done them all. Um, How and so have we been working on 24s since last summer? That's 2023. That makes no sense it makes uh, no sense but most cars for the previous year come out around summertime okay so thanks for mansplaining just for appreciate a, that just i'll let everyone that's yeah. it's ginger splitting <laughs> ginger splitting um one thing so out of all the different models the one thing that i think the one model that's really come into its own which is actually a decent buy now is the willies right the willies is finally worth something yes like yeah. before you were basically buying stickers yeah Black and grill and stickers. Stickers yeah. and Rubicon suspension they didn't feel like using. That's yeah. really much yeah. all it was. Yeah. Um, and in the JK days, it sold like hotcakes because nobody knew what they were buying. <laughs> like, it's just, there, there was no real off-road features to yeah. the whole darn thing. Yeah. 
It's the nameplate. People like yeah, the, it's the, the nameplate. It's Willie's. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's great. Yeah. But now, in 2024, we finally have a viable economical option to start a build with. Yep. Because it comes with the Rubicon flares finally. So, yeah, so that's it's got the higher two flares. inches of clearance. Yeah. So no matter what you lift, you're going to fit a bigger tire than you would have the previous year. Yeah, with the sport fenders. Or so whatever. And it looks meaner. Yeah, and I that looks, looks is half the battle. Like most people just yeah. go to the model. The new grill in black looks really cool on, yeah. on that model. The higher fenders, um, what else are you getting? You get your rear locker. You get a rear finally. locker, yeah, finally, which is basically let's overland standard. Yeah. Because yeah. like all the Toyotas come with a rear locker. They don't need yeah. a front locker, so yeah, why do we? Exactly. So the Willys is perfect for overlanding. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing we noticed driving around in it is uh, they made a pretty big faux pas with the uh, white dash. It's a white fabric dash. No, it's it's is like it? it's a white acid wash pair of jeans true. dash. Yeah. It's like, like it's from 1985. Yeah, they had some leftover Levi's. They and cut they them just up, stuck them on the dash. Stuck them on the dash. It's it maybe they're maybe it's a recycling plan and it helps it carbon be. credits and be more green. It could be. I mean, maybe you know, that's what they're after. That's what it is. Know. Uh, it also comes with 410 gears and Rubicon axles and brakes. Oh, right. It does, too. Yeah. So you're already getting good bra or good axles, so you yeah. can upgrade them. They're worthwhile. You can yeah. run 37, 38s. Uh, no problem as long as you don't mm -hmm. drive like a complete idiot. Yeah. Um, you're able to stop. You got the fenders. You got the locker. That's that's a great package yeah. right there. And yeah. you're not paying the price of the Rubicon, which is a lot farther away than it used to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Jeeps are so expensive now. That's the thing. Um and so when we talk about the Rubicon, because that comes up a lot, and people are still kind of confused. And so I don't know if it's the way in the USA. It must be with, with the Rubicon X versus just the normal Rubicon and what they've done there, because oh, yes. that to us makes zero sense whatsoever. I get it yeah. from a manufacturer's point of view. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, the Rubicon X is basically the full meal deal. Right. So it's the only way in a Rubicon you can get painted roof. Right. Painted fenders, painted fenders, leather interior, right? Soft touch door panels, soft touch dash. Yeah, which is so important. Leather yeah. Uh, shifters. Yeah. If you get the regular, the as we've referred the basic bitch Rubicon. Yeah, yeah. Um, black roof. Yeah. Gray textured fenders, cloth seats, cloth which seats. the cloth seats are okay. Yeah. yeah Hard plastic different. door panels, plastic yeah. dash, yeah. plastic shifters, and. That used to be the main reason to buy leather is because you got the nicer interior, regardless of the seats. The seats were the least of the Yeah, you wanted bonus. the soft touch panels. You just yeah, you don't those, want the yeah. door panel to feel like it's cheap plastic. Yeah. But uh, yeah. so now they've separated it. So it's like, like honestly, having a ton of options on every model right. yeah. makes it really hard for people to order properly to get in the vehicle at the dealership. Yeah. Or if you're looking for used ones, you never know what options you're going to get yeah. when you get it. So I, I understand it from I just find for the average consumer now is like if you want paint of roof and paint and fender, which is a look. I like that look. I know sometimes I, you don't. The Gladiator, or, I think, it, needs it. Yeah. The a Wrangler, it's a 50-50. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the Gladiator looks much better with a painted yeah. roof. And to lock away the leather and to lock away the soft touch panels in the interior, locking that away, but you know, almost which to a, the leather's yeah. one thing because yeah. you can put leather in for like a thousand bucks. Yeah, you can do cat skin. You can do some way cool better skin. leather than yeah. what you get anyway. Yeah, you can't do the door panels and the yeah. dash and everything else. It would yeah. get ridiculously expensive. Yeah. And then the, some of the ones we've done have come with that, uh, just right from the factory, have come with that worn 8,000 pound winch, right? On the yes, front of the where they even. mounted it all kind of weird on an angle. Yeah. yeah. That kind of concerns me when we looked at that. And the really, yeah. and depending on if you live in a state or a province that requires a front plate, right? it's got a ridiculous plastic yeah, bulbous in, in piece. In Canada, at least, yeah, it has a huge plastic piece That you have to like pop out a place to get to the winch, but yeah. how many times is that really gonna work? Yeah, And weird. then the crash bumpers on the bumper stick out ridiculously far like yeah, you're trying yeah. to touch the vehicle in front of you yeah <laughs> like maybe it's meant to push cars out of the way there's like, like little bumpers eight inches of plastic just oh, yeah. to mount a license plate like on the just front, because but. they added the winch yeah something with yeah. crash testing yeah and what people don't know they see oh yes it's a worn winch yeah. guys it's a worn eight thousand pound winch yeah eight thousand pound you know the last time i sold an eight thousand pound winch i worked on jk's yeah, it's been a, quite a while since we've done that. Like, Gladiators should get a 12,000 pound. Yeah. 
diesels should get a 12,000. 4XEs should definitely get a 12,000. The only yeah. time we ever do a 10 is on a gas Wrangler. Yeah, a gas Wrangler. And we'll honestly, do a 10. Yeah. put a 12 in that too while you're yeah. at it. Like, yeah. you probably have some fat friends you got to tow out of the mud. <laughs> <laughs> like, a little bit extra pulling power like, never hurt anybody. It doesn't get bigger. Yeah. It just has different gear ratio yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And I know you could make the 8,000 work if you brought like a bunch of snatch blocks and yeah, winch extensions. And, but we're already at a shortage of space. Yeah. or overweight yeah. so let's not bring all the snatch blocks in the world yeah yeah um yeah and then you talk about engine options right so the pentastar the three six is still around there you got the two liter turbo and so we were at the beginning when the two liter turbo came out we were still sticking with pentastars until we're seeing that and then we owned a two liter turbo which is your last jeep in doing that i um, loved it yeah it was actually really decent the only yeah. downside mid-grade fuel yeah, you have to put 89 octane in it. Right? And there's yeah. nothing I hate more in life yes, than, than going gas. to the gas station. Yes. I hate it. He tells me all the time. Just, um, uh, yeah. Up in Canada now, it just went up like 50 cents a liter. Well, people also don't realize is now we just had our fantastic government do the carbon tax increase again. So our fuel just went up again. So we're paying $2.18 oh, per sorry, liter. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Mansplaining incident. Yeah. A liter, <laughs> a gallon is 3.78 liters. Yes, yeah. So we are so now. So if you do the, the math, yeah. you can figure it out. We're now the most expensive place in North America to buy fuel. Excellent. Yeah. Does that mean our gas is better? It are we could, getting better gas? I think we're getting the top layer of gas. We're getting like, the best we're gas. We're getting none we're getting, of the toaster leavings in the bottom. No, we're getting the best, the best dinosaur fuel right from. So Drum we're Heller. getting straight up fresh dinosaurs right from Drumheller before <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's good to know. It, I. I Fresh is always best. Fresh is good. Like, man. you don't want yeah. what's in the back of the yeah. fridge. You want the good stuff. The nice thing about the two liter turbo, which is cool, is we added onto yours is the. Um, oh, the pss valve. Yeah, the pss valve. Yeah. It was the best $300 I ever spent. <laughs> I'm like, this costs 300 It bucks. comes in a box this <laughs> yeah. big. Yeah. You put it on, it yeah. adds absolutely no benefit except for pss. It sounds cool. When you let off the gas. Yeah. And yeah. that was enough to make it feel like I was in the Fast and Furious movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't the blow off valve that's of my supercharger took. that literally went on for 14 minutes at a stoplight. Yeah, that's all it took. But it did really improve the driving experience of the yeah. 4XE. Yep. Yeah. And it was louder on mine than Landon's because his yes. is the 4xE and yeah, the I 4xE was the, with the two liter turbo in there. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah, so we're basically getting to a lack of choice of engines is yeah. what's happening. Yeah, exactly. We no longer yeah. have the Eco Diesel, which was a sad day. I know a lot of people had issues with it, but I believe those issues were caused. Oh, I love mine I for seventy percent of the yeah. people out there. Were probably caused by how it was used, how yeah. it was built. Yeah. yeah, and but realistically diesels aren't like they are back in the old days because yeah. of all the emissions stuff are being put on them yeah. and it's really hurting the diesels yeah. so they're kind of in how gas engines were in the early 90s right fighting right. with the emissions crap and for the, most part, for the most part, I had at the end of it when I wasn't doing long trips anymore. So for the last four months of owning it, I was driving to and from work yeah. for 15 minutes each way and just around town. Um, and that's where I had the EGR issues. And I also Your had, the particulate, yeah, up. I had the, the part, um, particulate stuff filled up. All diesels yeah. should have yeah. the ability for you to put it into regen. Yeah, and it so wouldn't it go can into regen. Off the cap. Yeah, they had to make it go into regen because or whatever. Yeah. You're right, diesels... Yep. except for like you know little diesels they don't like to be just driven short distances and shut off yeah um but the eco diesel was closer to a volkswagen golf tdi than it was a ram 3500 comes. right right so remember eco is economy not towing yeah yeah that's true but now that that's gone but that was, no but that was great. Gone. Like the Eco Diesel was great, and then we have some friends that uh, have deleted their Eco Diesel, and we they have what? Yeah, they've deleted so they removed the motor. They've removed the motor completely. What is it? A Fred Flintstone car? And now it's car? like way faster. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we have some friends that do that. We can't condone it. It's obviously maybe not legal or questionable. It's a gray area it's kind here of a gray in area. Canada. I know in certain parts of the states it's a massive no-no. But um, I have, but, but everything's a massive but, no-no but, in California. Um, the people and the ones I've been in and driven have been. I like, have wow. driven wow. Uh, Teddy's several times yeah. Yeah, on all nuts. five tunes. Even just the economy tune is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's the mileage. Way. There's no black smoke. Yeah. He doesn't have to worry anymore about the EGR valve jamming soot down the motor. Yeah. Yeah. like force feeding it black dust for no reason. Yeah. yeah, it's good times. But anyways, yeah. But besides that, you know, yes, there's no more eco diesel. It's funny it was a how sad many day. everybody, and again, I don't know if it's huge in the States, but we have so many people in Canada looking for an eco oh, diesel yeah. Gladiator. They're paying some really good money, especially when Gladiator prices are depressed right now in the US. No, in the US, uh, they're literally uh, giving people yeah. away. Yeah. 
So up here, you're still paying top dollar, and they're hard to find. Yeah. Like they're really hard to find one because people want to grab that last. I think they even offer a bogo deal. A bogo, you yeah, buy one, you, get one? yeah, buy yeah. one get one free. Uh, it's just yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. It's, I'm so yeah, it's jealous. crazy what's happening down there. If only I could convert miles per hour to kilometers, I'd be able to drive one. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. But and so now uh, that engine's gone. No, the engine's gone. The you, Gladiator has one choice. Yeah, you got a three six. You got a three six Pentastar, yeah. and I've owned all of the models. Yep, we've driven it all. We've done and it all. we've built several and all that. And I firmly believe the three six is just not enough for the Gladiator. Yeah, unless you leave it stock. Yep. Um, even with re gears, especially when you load it up. Yeah, it's just. It's kind of like back in the JK days where it's like, well, it got the job done. It just wasn't the most enjoyable way of doing right, it. Right. Um, with the, but at least with there's still the two liter turbo in the yeah, in the Wrangler, in the, yeah, Wrangler, in the Wrangler, which, which is a great isn't idea. enough motor for the Gladiator, yeah. but for the Wrangler, it's phenomenal. Yeah. There's yeah. people out there that don't even re-gear it and put bigger tires on and drive it, and they're happy. Yeah. So that yeah. turbo makes a huge difference. Yeah. And just the way the driving experience yeah. is. Um, and then, of course, there's supposed to be, we talk about the 4 by e we'll get, you know, in the Wrangler, but the Gladiator side of things, I just mentioned that, is the 4 by e is rumored to come to the Gladiator in 2025. Um, they're just not saying what ice motor they're going to combine with it. Um, but that's supposed they to be They said by end of year. Uh, by Which, end of year, Technically, the 25s come out in about August. Yeah, so, so you know, that'd be interesting if you I'm, could get a 4 by e get all that electric torque Like, I'm not low, there but, yet where yeah. I need to get one of those type of vehicles no, because yeah, yeah. I don't have a where to plug it in. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they need to do something. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. they're getting their ass kicked by that amazing Honda Ridgeline. Yeah. And then four by E's up here, they were selling super hot in Canada. Like they were going crazy and now they're just sitting there, right? Um, I believe that's more yeah. based on interest rate. Probably than interest rate the and, for the 4xE. and 23's and the 24's are out. There's a lot of 23's, but. Yeah, yeah. a lot of the 23's, yeah. nobody wants to go buy the older yeah. technology because yeah. they're yeah. all hot and Yeah, so what's, di what's different in the 4xE for 24, right? So the biggest difference is you can make a cup of coffee. Right. On the side okay. of the road. You're right with that inverter harness yep. that basically lets you plug in. And unfortunately, out of all the research we've done, it looks like it is not backwards compatible. Yeah. It's like when you buy a new game system and they're like, well, forget those old games <laughs> that you forget paid money people. for. You got to buy <laughs> yeah. new ones at yeah. $80 a pop. Yeah. So yeah, we made coffee. We did a video on it uh, last year. Yep. I mean, we did a four by E, a 2024, yeah. one of the first people to kind of lift it's one. It's a little one. bulky, but it is yeah. still a nice unit. Yeah. Like, yeah realistically they probably could have just not put the plug and just put that thing somewhere in the car yeah just put it as a option like, in the car somehow but so. i don't know it is it's a, it's a fairly big job. black box right with yeah the box yeah. is like this yeah. the cord is thick because of the yeah. power it's hard to coil up it's just yeah. going to take up more room yeah something they already took away from the 4x e by making the battery sit high inside yeah yeah but yeah, but like 4 by e is we have a lot of people that have now gotten one, a lot of people that have wheeled it. Um, Landon and our team uh, actually has one. He's had one now for a couple of years. Yeah. We've had it in Moab. Utah, We've had it all that. over the place. Um, and yeah, like it's it's a torque monster. It's great. It's it great. does have drawbacks. Yep. Like everything. Yeah. So, but with the 24, so yeah. back to the 24, yeah. because we're all over the place here. <laughs> the 24 gets that really fancy coffee making cord. Yes, yes. coffee making cord. It gets the nice Very screen, cool. like everything else. It gets all the other updates, yeah. uh, the new grill, all that stuff. Right. Um, some really cool looking seats, actually. The, the seat well, leather right. the is embossed a little different. Yeah, it's it kind of nice when you get the higher end one. Yeah. So most people are just gonna gravitate to that because they're always the fear of missing out. They don't want to not have the newest looking thing right. when they're parked in their neighbor's place. And it's yeah. like, I want the neighbor to be drooling over what I have and he couldn't afford. So is they there want any the reason, other reason to own a Jeep? <laughs> oh, man. No, no, could have no. just bought a Subaru. Could have bought a Subaru. Um, yeah. So realistically, um, most people are just going to want the big screen. Right. It's just the way it, that's the main thing. It, everyone just sees a bigger screen. So it's just like, oh, there's a new Samsung television. I want that one. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to be it for most people. Right. Um, so that's going to leave a lot of 23s behind, which will be good for other people because there will come rebates. Right. Yeah. Because they do usually show up when there's a need for them. Right. Right. So don't worry. Yeah. If you want one, you can get a good deal. You just got to hold off a little bit. Yeah. And then just, again, I'm sure this is the same in the U.S. as in Canada, but the interest rates, you know, have been 6.99 for quite some time, and people are doing long-term. If you long have good terms, credit. If you have good credit, If right? you have bad credit, yeah. it might be 50. And the price of vehicles up here, you're spending like 80000 bucks for a, a Rubicon. It's kind of 
crazy. Sometimes least, even more if you're getting an X. If you're, you're a Rubicon yeah. X, you're almost in the 90s. In the and 90, you can 000. spec it over 90 yeah. if you put the power roof and a bunch of other yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's just so much money, right, to Which go into is, a Jeep. I remember in 2018 buying a Rubicon yeah. for $38,000. Yeah. I bought my Sorry, JK. 2018? 2014. 2014, I did that. 2018, yeah. Yeah. I was in the 50s Right. when I got the first JL. I so, think I was. When I got my my first white JK, that was fully loaded Sahara at the time, and that was in 2011, but 2012 version, and yeah. I bought that for twenty one thousand dollars. It was crazy, and at that time, Maury bought his a couple months before mine, which was a sport two door for sixteen thousand. Left 000. over twenty eleven. Yeah, for for sixteen thousand yeah, dollars Canadian, exactly. right? So in America, now the yeah. cheapest you could ever buy one for is like forty five k up here yeah. Yeah. for a base base. Baseball. So again, we're talking Canadian currency. We're not sure what it is in the U.S. because we don't live down there. I'm sure it's you know again. I've looked. You guys are doing pretty good. Yeah, our our dollar is worth about thirty something percent less than the American dollar. So kind of do your math. I don't there even think it's about. powerful enough to call it a dollar. I don't think so anymore either. But so yeah. But um, yeah, and then you look at Jeep, and then you see what's happening, you know, because Wrangler is you know still selling almost a couple hundred grand of them last year in yeah. North America. But you look at the Bronco competition, and the Bronco kind of had a fizzled start, at least out here. And well, now we're starting it, it's to see hard them. to grow when you can't buy them. That's true. Yeah, it's, you it's get them. you the roof, cannot the roof get, problem, and you the, can't get high yeah. numbers of sales yeah. without things to sell. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I think it's a it's a weird thing. So then they had the issue with the roofs. They didn't even make it out of the factory. They're yeah. just full of water in the yeah. parking lot, yeah. waiting for yeah. pieces. Yeah, and then the awesome soft top and the. Yeah. So yeah, so we see it a lot of pe a lot of people come here saying, "Hey, can you guys work on Bronco?" And so Sean ended up getting one of the first Sean Broncos in Canada, a Bronco. and we ended up putting a suspension in there. But it was given to us, and it was just mismatched, and he didn't have a good time. And with it, it wasn't again. right out the bat; it took forever to arrive. The did, uh, yeah. the suspension yeah, it was like six seven months. Or and whatever. it definitely wasn't the suspension for what he used it for. No, no. So he you know, again, he has that in a lot of videos. People have seen those videos, and so we still get calls. Like you had one this week, and they're like, "Do you guys work on Broncos?" And we're like, "Do your research, yeah, guys." Yeah. Just because inner, uh, just because Instagram told you this is the kit, yeah, doesn't mean it's any good, yeah, or doesn't mean it's meant for what you want to use it for, yeah. So yeah, so we get asked that a lot, and then of course the other competition is still the Forerunner. The Forerunner still kicking they around. They still make that. Still make the Forerunner. Okay. You no, know, they're coming out with a new one apparently, and you've got the new. I can't Lankers tell the difference if they're a 2009 or a I don't know 2023 either. model. I don't know how to tell. So. I'm so, not a Toyota guy, so I don't know how to tell. I don't know. But it, I do prefer the seating position in a Forerunner to a Tacoma. Yeah. Tacoma yeah. sits like a Corolla. Yeah. And then we talk about Gladiator. It's funny because it comes up a lot in, in social media lately is the Honda Ridgeline is outselling the Gladiator by a significant margin. So I'm like, well, hmm, interesting. It's hard. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. Have you ever been off-road in Moab when VTEC kicks in? I have not been off-road with VTEC. Like, <laughs> I imagine you'll need the five-point well, harness. What am I going to experience with the VTEC? Uh, <laughs> my guess is nothing. Nothing. Okay. But they have a trail sport efficient. version. Yeah, they have the trail sport version. That's right. Black and, badging, uh, all that kind of stuff. it has less capability features than yeah. the pilot trail sport. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they have a market somewhere. 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 There. They're just following the vans around. Yeah. It's funny because I do see them out there. Oh, I do see them. Sean and I have run across them in the bush, and I'm just like, what? It's kind of weird to see one. Nothing but. is funnier yeah. than a Ridgeline or a Chevy Avalanche yeah. with a cap. Yeah, true. Or a canopy. Yeah. It is the silliest looking thing yeah. having a triangle canopy. <laughs> Your triangle canopy. I'm like, why did you buy this? Just yeah. get an SUV. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't but, know people's <laughs> buying decisions, but there must be there because, again, it's outselling a Gladiator. Well, yeah, but. Jeep is obviously learning. They may have done a few things wrong in the last two years yeah just the, the prices are too high but they had that the press conference talking about it yeah they did. so they yeah. know where they've put themselves yeah yeah so it'll be interesting to see where jeep goes because again i think you know especially with the bronco competition that's that's definitely hurting and that's why we have this new screen yeah. that's why we have these power seats we haven't even talked about the power seats in 24 because i'm sorry but they're just completely ridiculous like so <laughs> Here we go. If you want a Jeep, yeah. you need to make the decision on if a 23 or a 24 is right for you. Yes. Please, please sit in both Jeeps before you make that decision. Yeah. Because if you're a taller gent or have a longer torso or have a big fat head. And we're not talking like super tall. We're talking no. like 5'11". Yeah. Like I'm, <laughs> I am six feet, yeah, I'm mostly 5 torso. Yeah. 
And when I sit in the power seat version yeah. on the lowest setting, yeah. if I move my head, I touch the airbag surrounds that go around yeah. you now. Yeah. So that means if I'm off road and I hit a bump, I'm gonna have a concussion. Yeah. And then the airbag's gonna knock me the fuck out. And we're literally from our head, at least my head when I'm in there, we're talking about an inch and a half. Oh yeah, it's like. And so coupled with the seat being higher because they had to fit the motors in there and everything. And I don't the have seat. my seat in a gangster lane. Yeah, exactly. So it's like sitting as far back as you can, recline as you can, but sitting with the seat at, it's you can't go any lower. Coupled with the airbags they now have. So yeah. that's behind you. They've got the canisters behind you. So that's why the sound bar is now all the redesign. And then yeah. on the sides, you've got the airbags, it's the curtain like airbags. An angled out. And it comes down and angles out. So even getting in and driving it. It's is, a little weird. If you're, again, close to six feet, I'm 5'11, you're six feet tall. And, and to be honest, yeah. even the non power seat. Yep. Yeah. It, it, the height is not great because of the trim Beca panels. Because of the trim panels. It's all above the trim you. panels. Yeah. Like, yeah. so. So something, yeah, so something, again, people just don't know, but we've been sitting and driving Jeeps and doing 24s for quite some time now, is like sometimes I forget and I get in one and I'm test driving or doing whatever and I'm just turning a corner going or a speed bump yeah. and whack, you hit your head at the side, right? And it's, again, your head kind of just sits right in that Maybe that Jeep did the research that the primary amount of Jeep people happen to be on the shorter side. It could be. Or the yeah. shorter people have more money. Yeah. I also think it's funny that the seat doesn't go very far back. You notice that? But yeah. you, can, you can put it all the way to the friggin' dashboard. Oh yeah, the power seat like, will literally push you yeah. against the steering like wheel. Like you could crush your knees. Yeah, you can, yeah it's just like it's super no odd. no problem at all. Yeah. So definitely an afterthought there. We yeah, can thank they're the, thinking of short people. Thinking of short people, but, uh, but that's what we can I thank I don't mind you. short people. Yeah. I've dated many. You, def you definitely have. But yeah. <laughs> that doesn't help my driving experience at all. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. So that's one of the factors that has stopped me. So you can thank the Bronco for that. Me. You got you know, this whole power seat option, which again, you know, it's such an expensive vehicle. Yeah, I get some people like the power seat if you don't have it. I'm more of a Jeep I have more headroom in the Miata. Yeah, that's true. More headroom in our Miata. Um, yeah, and then the airbags above you. I understand safety. All makes sense, but yeah, somehow... Yeah, nothing says safety like an explosion by your head. Yeah. So somehow you can tell that all this was kind of an afterthought. It was definitely an afterthought. Like it's, and I find the same with the radio. When I look at the placement of the radio in the 24s, I look at that and I'm just like, this is silly. And but, how it utilizes the screen, like the programming. Yeah. It's not utilizing the whole screen properly no, all the time. No, no. And then the yeah. vents underneath it look like they came from a different car. Yeah. I'm like, so it's not, not hating on 24s because obviously, you know, there's a lot of nice things that I'd like in a 24 too. But, I bleed Jeep. But, you know, just, I'd, I'd rather they kept it the way it was. But I understand the airbag thing kind of eating into headroom. Like, I like Apple CarPlay wireless. That's yeah. great. Yes, I but do. But yeah, I, love that I also truck. like my phone being fully charged. Yeah. So that's yeah. usually I plug it in. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. But our main issue is the yeah. height. Yeah. The headroom the height. is the biggest problem. Yeah. So I think we can thank the Bronco for that. It's pushed them to do the bigger screen, pushed them to do the seats, yeah. um, pushed them to do the airbags and that kind of stuff. That's just my opinion on that. It's kind of, it just seemed it, rushed. Yeah, it just seems rushed and kind of an afterthought. So it'll be interesting when, I don't I think the last thing I read is they're looking at a refresh in 28. Who knows if it's a mid seat, mid refresh or whatever it is, but I think I read that on one of the forums lately. But the next um, one's usually when it's a whole new vehicle. A whole new vehicle, right? So who knows? Who knows? So and then back to engines, who knows what's going to happen with engines, right? Um, that'll you know. depend on elections. Yeah. Yeah, definitely will. Realistically, maybe we get to use gas engines for the next 40 years. That would be awesome. I don't maybe they get more it. efficient. What is in Canada? It's supposed to be 20... Is it 2035? Maybe. No more ice? It's supposed to be just all electric? Yeah, I don't really see that happening. I forget that, right? I don't see that happening either. No. Just the I, infrastructure It alone, just means but people are going to keep used vehicles longer that pollute worse. Yeah. Seems silly. I don't know. But anyways, it's um, just something where Jeep's going, just a thought I had to bring up. But um, So looking at what we're going to do next is we're, as you can tell from our discussion we just had now, spirited discussion on 24s, um, we're definitely not going to buy a 24. I can't. Just I can't, literally, if even if can't Jeep came it. down here and was like, yeah. we want you to take this for your make content, yeah. I'd be like, how? Can you remove the airbags, please? Yeah. Do you want me to sit in the back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How is this going to work? Um, but yeah. So getting into an older Gladiator is what we're thinking of. You know, we'd love in to. In my head, I, yeah. I'm i hoping to find a good deal on a Max Tow Eco Diesel Gladiator. Yeah. That's the holy grail right there. 21, 22, one of those. Yeah, one That's, of those. Yeah. Like, I have some ideas that are going to shake the... Uh, yeah. It'll be like nothing you've ever seen us build for anybody or ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of what we're thinking our next project's going to be. So we're on the lookout. So we're on the lookout. If anybody knows a one, and you know, it's okay if it even has a little bit of damage, we don't care. Yeah, we're like gonna we're going to replace half the parts anyway. Replacing half the 
thing anyway. So, but yeah, that's our kind of our next thing that we'll we'll get into when we do that. We'll announce it. Um, the other thing that's come up lately, just as we're kind of talking about Jeeps, um, is tires. Like tires are coming up so much lately. So we get a lot of questions on tires and wheel packages. Um, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to discuss with you because we're fairly opinionated on wheels and tires. We've run them all. Like we've done everything from fuel to KMC, all the major brands, yeah. Method, um, Icon, we've done the Icon Rebound Pros, and then yeah. tires, was we've done every name brand tire. We've even done some cheaper tires. We've both blown tires. We've both have split lot of our own stupidity. Slotting into ditches and cracking rims. You know, we've hit aluminum rims so hard before. I like before. to go fast. I like to go fast, man. So fast turn left um but yeah so that you know for us is as far as the opinion in tires is what's kind of coming up for tires right now because things are just about to kind of shift i think in the next four to five so months. realistically what it's been nice is the last five to six years the industry has really come out with some good tires yeah like back in the day everyone was running a swamp or mud tire or right. something from yeah. Intico yeah. or one of the other brands and you really Mickey Thompson's older tires right yeah and yeah. you really Intico had an off-road only tire like it was not fun on the road it right. wasn't yeah. enjoyable yeah. on the highway yeah everyone around you could hear you yeah um <laughs> if it was wet or icy out there's a good chance you're dying yeah but yeah. uh now we're getting a lot of good aggressive all terrains or hybrid tires in between all terrain and mud right. terrain right. and we even have some good mud tires that stick to the ground in bad weather right yeah so the main two we've been using a lot yeah was the baja boss at and mt yeah i love those tires. and they are phenomenal they've won some sema awards yeah uh, they've been available a lot, so we've had no real issues yeah, getting yeah. a hold of them in the last three years. And both of us together, like we've done well over 100,000 plus miles on oh, yeah. both those tires, yeah. and we have broke them. Yep. We put them through some crazy yeah. situations where they've come out great, but we've also broke them. So Yeah, yeah so the, the only downside to those, I have yeah. found that Mickey Thompson decided with making a new premium tire right. yeah. that they would go against the grain and the specs of everything else in the world yeah. and make the bead thicker. Ah, oh, true. Yes, yeah, so we've been having so problems. So now the bead doesn't perfectly seat into certain wheels. Right. And bead locks need shims. Yes. Yeah. Or spacers, spacers on the ring. Just to make Because the, ring the bead's too damn thick. Yeah. And normally, you want extra thickness. Yeah. But in, <laughs> in the tire world... Yeah. Nothing fits it. <laughs> Nothing fits it. So it's like, I can't just add more lube and hope for the best. Yeah. Like, it's You've tried. literally a pain. <laughs> and what the main thing it causes is horrible like balancing. Snap. Yeah. And it's just a pain. Like, I've had to send some back, stuff yeah, like we've that. Had a but lot realistically, of yeah. when they balance, they are my favorite tire to drive on. Yeah. Like, they are phenomenal. They wear a little faster than my gold standard Nittos that I love, like my Nitto Trail Grapplers. Like, well, that's because yeah. Nitto doesn't have any siping in the Trail yeah. Grapplers. Yeah. So, but I'm right now I'm running the MTs. You've got um, the MTs, and you know, they look great. They, they drive look great. great. They stick great, and ice and snow on the road, yeah. and then off road, they're amazing, right? Yep. Air down to five PSI all day long and having a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, so you've got the Mickey Thompsons. Uh, BF Goodrich, we don't really deal with too much here because they measure so small. Well, that's they really measure the main. small, yeah. and people complain about not being big enough. Yeah. And uh, kind of the, balloon the looking. real thing yeah. is when, since most of the tires we do here is 37, 38, right. 40, stuff like that, yeah. they don't look that cool in a 37. No, Like the KO2, despite it's not a bad tire, yeah. it's got a lot of plain space. Yeah. And yeah. half your build is about looks. You want it to look good. You yeah. spend a lot of money on you tires. You want it to look aggressive. You like good. it to look aggressive. Yeah. So later this year, or they already have the KO3 out. Yes, the KO3, yeah. But it only has two really small sizes. I think it comes in a Toyota size, like a 285. Right, yeah. And something else, so there must be two vehicles that come with it from factory. That's right. the only reason the two sizes, so You're hopefully right. it'll come with right. the rest of the range of the normal tires. Yeah, this year, yeah. And we can see how that is, because yeah. Landon would jump on that in a yeah. second. Yeah. Um, the other couple tires that are on the market, the it came out like a year or more ago, but yeah. the the AT3s from Toyo. Yes, Toyo AT3s. Snowflake rated. Yeah, we've done quite a few of those. Decently aggressive. Yeah. Downside, never in stock. Yeah, it's hard to find. Half the time. Them. It's hard to find. Toyo them. has not had good stock since COVID. They have not had a good time. Yeah, we've always had a problem getting, so, getting Toyo. But when they get, they drive great. They yeah. even have, a, if you wanted to do a 35, yeah. they make a C rated 35 yes, for a do. 17. You're right, they do. Which would be super comfortable because most C rated, yeah. or sorry, most 35s for a 17 are E rated. E rated, yeah. Which are stiffer than they need to be, but. I, I think they must be just because of the trucks they end up on or yeah, something. Yeah, but yeah, the weight. Um, what's yeah. really interesting to me that I think I want to try next time yep. is the Toyo RT Trail. RT Trail. Yep. And it's selling like hotcakes. So is that like a hybrid AT again? It is yeah. a hybrid AT. Okay. It's definitely closer to an MT. Okay. So yep. 
the RT, I think, is being discontinued, okay. which was I what the that. trail grappler, or sorry, the ridge grappler was based on. Right. Yeah. So the yeah. ridge grappler was based on that, which is a phenomenal tire. Yeah, we've it's, had those for years. It's yeah. a great tire, balances yeah. great, drives yeah. straight. Yeah. I've cut the sidewall a couple times, but yeah. it was mostly my fault. Yeah. Um, mm. But the new RT trail is much more aggressive. Yeah. Um, it's definitely probably between the ridge grappler and the trail grappler. That's the best way I'd say right. with a better yeah. pattern. With a better pattern. That's yeah. probably going to yeah. keep it quieter and better in bad weather. Yeah. So yeah. those are definitely, we've put some on, we've sold some to customers. Yeah. Also, very low stock. Yeah. Yeah, very um, low stock, hard to find. I think we put it on Sean's Bronco before he got rid of it too. We did. Yeah, yep. we did. Yeah. Um, those were great. Um, there's yeah. also some other ones. There's the... Um, Oh, what are those? The Yoka? Uh, no, the Geolander. Oh, the Geolander series. Was yeah. it? No, the Falcon. Are you Falcon, talking Falcon? Okay. AT4W, the new one? AT3W. No, the new one. Yeah, the, the new AT4 one's AT4W. The AT4W is out, and it looks pretty good. The AT3Ws we've done before. 3 w is not bad. Everyone loved it. Yeah, we've done those in a few um, gladiators. I think that was Justin's year. favorite tire. Yes, it's true. Justin yeah, McBride. Just, yeah, Justin McBride brings um, up that tire a lot. But now the, yeah. it has the AT4W, which yeah. should be really cool. I'd be yeah. I'd nice to try some of those. It'd be nice. Yeah. And I think there's some wild peaks that have been really popular as well. Yeah. Just we don't get a lot of them in here because we'll usually pick from we're in the like Nitto Mickey Thompson, yeah. Toyo, yeah. and then we just start going down the line. So if we can get our customers into what we consider and have beat the crap out of yeah. top yeah. tier tire, um, we usually do that. Yeah. So yeah, it's always good to get a name brand tire. It's the most important part of your vehicle. Most important part. It's the only and everybody part has an opinion. The like everybody has an opinion on what they've driven for years and done for years, and everybody's opinion is valid that way. I have no problem with that. From our standpoint, we drive these things daily. We drive them a long time, long distances. We do long trips down to California or yeah. Arizona or whatever it is. We go off road. We rock crawl. We do overlanding. We overload our vehicles. Like we kind of test all this stuff, and so we've had great tire success on all different weight, all vehicles. different weights. Yep, and all different types of vehicles. Um, so just take that with with our opinion in mind that's where it comes from is just from our experience like don't get wrong we don't know everything no of course not but no, of course not. we're just giving you yeah. from the experience we have to yeah. provide to our clients yeah. that come in or people that ask our opinion and we're doing jeeps and vehicles every day people yeah. are leaving here with something i want to make sure they're leaving with a really good product because yeah. right it is safety it's, it's the shoes on your vehicles it's the, the only thing. thing keeping you on the road yeah um and then wheels we get all these questions about wheels because oh, we've done a few wheels. wheels videos right so we've done like method wheel video we've done a terraflex you know beadlock video we've done method video on, icon on vehicle icon dynamics. video yeah so we've done all these different kinds of videos and so people constantly calls and say hey you know what do you like best out of all the ones that you've done and we've run them all again on our own vehicles yeah. um and so you know looking at maybe what i think i get a lot of times people don't truly understand what a beadlock is and there's also the uh also the legality of running a beadlock because in canada our area of the world up here you can't run a beadlock on the road there's places yeah. in the states you but can't it, either yeah yeah but uh but maybe let's talk about that what a beadlock is so what a yeah. beadlock yeah. is and the reason it probably like has why you issues, want it yeah. why yeah. you would want it is you could put no air in your tire and it wouldn't pop off the wheel because it's bolted to it yeah it's bolted to it's it. that simple yeah the reason it isn't um some areas don't let them be legal, legal yeah. and they're not dot approved is because it's a multiple piece wheel right yeah. so technically a part could come off and fly off and hit somebody or yeah. if it hasn't been regularly torqued yeah. anything could happen so that's the main reason yeah now that said there's now many options that are almost as good as almost as good yeah or if not just as good provide the same benefits but, yes yeah. so that clamping force on the bead so yeah. you can run super low pressures with even sideways lateral force on the yep. tire not have it come off um and so the first one we tried that was in that kind of area was the icon rebound pro yeah so yeah. sean got the yeah. icon rebound pros for his bronco right from yeah. his yeah. icon right. sponsorship yeah, so we threw a set of those on yeah uh, that's a really neat design. So you put the tire on, and it basically creates a fence. Yes, the bead fence. The bead the fence. The bead fence is what it's called. Where it puts all these, like, you know those giant concrete pillars in front of stores so you can't run through yes. it with your car? Yeah. That's what it does on the back of the bead yeah. with, uh, yeah. like, a hydraulic fitting bolt. Yeah. So what you have to do is you put the tire on, yeah. and then you put all these bolts in lightly. You yeah. any sees it. Yeah. You lube the O-ring. Lube the O-ring. Yeah. And then you seat the bead. Yeah. Then you let the air out. Then you put the bolts in. Then you let the air in again. Then you torque the bolts. Right. You now have, it will not come off. They've yeah. even tried laterally dragging a Ford Raptor with them on, yeah, and sideways, it will not it come off. Yeah, it wouldn't come off. The downside, Yeah. here's we got the problem. That's only one side of the vehicle. 
or yeah. it's only one yeah, side. It's only which on the outside. Yeah. Most bead locks only lock only on the outside, side yeah. unless you get one of the really good ones like Rock Monsters or, or those, one of those, yeah. some other stuff. Yeah. But say you're not a tire guy. Yeah. You you don't do your own tires. You're yeah. going to have to go in to like Discount Tire or Cal Tire, whatever's up yeah. here. You'd be yeah. like, I need to change tire. Yeah. That's great. Have fun. <laughs> there's there's a couple of things to worry about. One, they've probably never seen a set of Icon Rebound Pros before. No, probably not. And they're going to screw them up. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. it. Yeah. Or they know what they've got themselves into, and they are going to charge you yeah. to hell and back. Yeah. yeah. Because they have to remove all the bolts, then break the bead, then yeah. put it back on, then put the things in a yeah. bit. Do the process the again. Put the, lube like, it, make sure the O-rings are good. Yeah, that kind of thing. and like... Yeah. What if the O-rings aren't good? Yeah. They're not going to have them. Yeah, you got to get them from so the icon. So we've created an issue there. So if you were out of town or if you had yeah. an emergency you want done quickly, or you just want to get them mounted, they're going to cost more to mount. We'll yeah. charge more to mount them. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we do. So it takes that's, twice as long. that's where that problem It's still lies. a really great solution. But it is like, a, it's a really interesting thing. Nobody phenomenal thought solution. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought and it was it's, really cool. And amazing. And they say they'll hold air no problem without the seals. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a really good hydraulic fitting High placed fitting, yeah. into the... Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. But and then and then we went to method, right? And method then came out with we the, finally tried what used to be joked upon as the Toyota wheel because yeah. they, the first couple really looked like a Toyota wheel. Yeah, they, before they changed their style a little bit, but yeah. is the method bead grip yeah, the probably bead grip. the best wheel technology I, I have seen since I've been in this industry? Yeah, I love it. Basically, you get a basic styled wheel, which is great for cleaning yeah. and yeah. makes it strong. It yeah. isn't like thin components. And both bead sections have cast or machined teeth yep. in a reverse pattern. Yep. So if you try and push the bead off, yep. it's gripped the bead yeah, from going gonna anywhere. It, yeah. And the bead has a bit of a wall yep. that it sits into. Yep. And that's on both sides of the wheel, too. Both sides. Yeah, both sides of the wheel. So any of Method's bead locks <laughs> yep. has the bead grip on the inside. Right. Yeah. So Plus the ring on the outside. And the yeah. ring on the outside. But like yep. the bead grip. So yep. you get it. Yep. You mount it exactly the same as all other wheels. Yep. You balance it. You put it on the car. Yeah. You go to any shop that does tires. They treat it like a normal wheel. Yeah, they they never need out. to know. Like we've had a few problems here when we're mounting them. Again, with the Mickey Thompson it's tires with, because the bead is thicker. It's and a Mickey only Thompson with tire the Mickey Thompson because is, yeah. the bead yep. they designed and the teeth and everything, the Mickey Thompson bead yep. is just So what we, a what we've big. had to do in that case, because again, we sell lots of Mickey Thompsons with methods. And so we finally figured this out as we put the tire on the rim, we inflate it to 60, 70 PSI for let a moment, out. let it out, inflate air it to 60, again. let it out, air we it up to 60. We also lube. Yeah. the bead grip yeah. section. Yeah, lube the crap out of it. But and yeah, then just, we uh, balance it. Then we yeah. bring the air down when it's on the vehicle to yeah. like a normal 30, yeah. 32 PSI. Yeah. And so when we've done that, it's worked out. Yeah. Once we and figured it out. I yeah. There's a good chance they'll be the only wheels I buy from now on. Yeah, yeah. Because the money, yeah. the performance, um, our buddy Nate from Dirt Lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Nate, Nate. Yeah, Nate he played around with him at zero. Yeah, he drove around with Tacoma zero at zero PSI. on the snow. They don't yeah. recommend doing that, but he did it without a problem. So Yeah, he's using, uh, what was he using? BFGs. I think he had a 39-inch BFG yeah, tire on BFG, his crazy Tacoma. On a method bead grip at zero PSI in the snow. Or it could have been yeah. on the, it could have even been on the, yeah. his uh, Gladiator. I don't remember. But yeah. we've had nobody complain about losing a bead on a bead grip. Yeah. Like, you yeah, would have really, to be doing some serious shit. Yeah. It's definitely my favorite wheel now. And yeah. there's so many different styles that there's, have come on the last year. There's seven different that, styles now. Yeah. All of them have multiple color choices. Not yeah. all the colors, yeah. but... You get the black. You can get blue you get if you black, want. You, you can get blue. Get, you get bronze. You get anthracite or the silver. Yeah. You get, so it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And now they just came out with some poly or uh, some machined ones. So it's just oh, raw aluminum oh, okay. color. Okay, I didn't know that. That'd be and that cool. looks great yeah. if you don't live in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, machine wheels don't work up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah they don't work up here. Because honestly, who wants design. to be constantly double checking the torque on, like what, thirty-two bolts on a bead lock or whatever yeah, I don't it is? Do that all the way around the car. Yeah. yeah, people barely check their air filter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, I'm getting horrible gas mileage. Your, yeah. You take the air filter out. Be a responsible wheeler and, and check your vehicle. Through it at all. Yeah. And oh, by the way, cold air intakes and yeah. all the fancy air filters, they yeah. let more dirt in when you're off-roading. You're just in case you would dirt. like to know. And I have verified that when I had the last Mojave and I had to take the intake off. Yes. And there was dirt all the way to the valves. There was. <laughs> so cold air intake. We had to take all that yay. apart and clean it. Yeah. Don't cold air intake. But don't worry. It made cool noises. Yeah. Cool whooshing noises. Yeah. 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 
Cool. So uh, that's what uh, we wanted to talk about today, just what was on our minds. Um, but yeah, this has been our second episode and uh, a lot of comments in the last video. We got tons of comments that said calls, people telling us what to talk about. Um, we've got a long list. Don't don't worry. We will keep doing this as long as people find it interesting and, and want to know more. But uh, we sincerely appreciate all the feedback and all the jokes and jabs at us. was pretty awesome too. So Is this where um, we try and yeah. let people know that yeah. your RAM's for sale? Uh, yeah, so we have uh, we've had the Epic Ram for a while now. We'll do an episode on the Ram because we do get a lot of yeah, questions. We'll about do an episode on the Ram. We can fit it. In the I shop. think we're probably the only people in North America that have really wheeled the crap out of a Ram and a done half ton Ram, half ton Ram um, and done the things with it, like the stuff I did with Sean last uh, last summer up in Alaska and, and Northern fixed BC. Everything we broke, broken it, blew improved it up, it. reinforced it, improved it. Yep, we got a wicked bumper on it. So like, it's it's if a great truck. You live in Canada. Yep. Or you want to import it to the States and somehow yeah, can get possible. it passed on an inspection because it is lifted and it's not a lift that you can pass is not lifted. Yeah, no, definitely not. So by all means, yeah, it's for sale. It is a crazy deal. Go fast crazy camper deal. and all ready to go. Crazy truck. Just I go love the hunting. truck. It's awesome. But again, but it's time to move on to our next vehicle We've build. extinguished the marketing value out of that vehicle yeah. as we yeah. do most vehicles. Yeah. And we need to build some more stuff so you guys can have some good content to watch. Yeah. And we can test more parts to see if they're worth selling you. Yes. We're doing this for everybody else, not yeah, for ourselves. Yeah, uh, we don't even like vehicles. I work way too hard to, uh, like, not to. If we realistically, <laughs> if it wasn't for you guys, we'd just be at home playing hell divers all day long. I would just be at home playing video games. Yeah. Pretty much, man. Just That's, video uh, games, eating fried chicken, calling yeah. it a day. Yeah. So. Anyways. Cool. So we'll wrap that up. But um, again, thank you to Beardo, Stefan behind the camera here and all his gear. Um, this big shiny light that's in our faces. I don't know about that. Gonna have well, to talk wear about sunglasses that. next time. I think we'll have to wear sunglasses. But otherwise, uh, yeah, the production value. So like value. before. Yeah. Like, subscribe, subscribe. Yeah. and put comments in the bottom. If you have ideas for shows or what you'd like to hear us talk about, send or put comments in the bottom. We do respond. We were surprised. Yeah at the amount of comments that were on the first podcast. Yeah, I was kind of like, what? Like, if the comments outweighed the amount of views, even though we got the views we expected from yeah, it. Yeah. The comment interaction yeah, yeah. was great. So by all means, if you have any questions or suggestions, give them to us. We're easy going. Yeah. Hell, we'll make a whole video on talking about cookies. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> cookies. I could do a cookies podcast. Oh, I could definitely do a cookies podcast. There's probably some gourmet cookie stores we could get some cookies from. It probably is. Or yeah. someone's mother could send us some cookies. That that would be more likely. That would be that better. Would, that would be better and more likely. Even better, don't tell us if you put some secret ingredients in it. Please tell us. Because that would probably <laughs> make it more entertaining of a podcast. That would be funny if we we're eating that. Yeah. yeah. And it just hits you. I, I personally would like to know. <laughs> <laughs> just tell me. I don't like being my will. I don't like being drugged against my will. But hey, you do you. Whatever, man. It's all good. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> <It> would... <laughs> but that's a story for another day. <laughs> that's for, for next podcast. But uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. And uh, we're out. Cheers. You have been listening to Mud, Sweat, and Fat, a seductive discussion on Jeeps in 2024. We're two dudes, one wrench. If you'd like to support our team, check out the website at epic-4wd.com, where you can purchase products for your Jeep Wrangler or Gladiator, lovingly crafted by Canadians with above-average intelligence. Stay tuned for more tales to come. And Jim, your wife's cheesecake was finger-licking good. The team thoroughly enjoyed it. Please tell her... Thank you again.